Today I will show you how to knit these socks. These are traditional Norwegian socks with Selby pattern. And as you can see they have a special type of heel, which I will show you later. And they have, also if I turn them this way, you can see the Selby rose pattern. Uh, these socks are men's size, but I have also made socks uh, a size for women, and I have them here. So I will link to pattern for both so that you get the right number of stitches and suggestions for patterns to make. But how to do it, I will show you in men's size. So you will need two colors of wool yarn. I have chosen a yarn that will give round about 22 stitches for every 10 centimeters or 4 inches when using knitting needle size 3.5 millimeters. Uh, first, on the top of the ankle on the sock I will knit some ribbing and for that I will use knitting needle size 3 millimeters, so down half a size for the ribbing. And to cast on, I first make this slip knot and this will be my first stitch. So for the men's socks I will need to cast on 64 stitches and those will be evenly distributed on 4 knitting needles so that will be 16 on each. And uh, before I begin I, will, uh, I would like to apologize for my uh, choice of color for this project because I know it is difficult for you to see when I use black yarn but I will do my best to make it uh, clear what I do and if you are in doubt after having seen this you can go to the video called how to knit uh, Selby mittens uh, because I demonstrate the same techniques there so but anyway when I cast on, I use, I hold the yarn like this in my right hand and I use my index finger. From underneath I go up and I twist so I get a loop like that around my index finger. I take the knitting needle on top of this yarn, I push down and I go up through the loop, I let it go and I pull slightly. Don't pull too hard and make make it too tight because then it will be really difficult to knit the first row. Again, go from underneath and twist. Take your knitting needle on top of the yarn and pull down, push down and go up through the loop, let it go and tighten. So when you're comfortable doing this you can speed up a bit. Don't go too fast because you need to be in control and to make it even so you don't get some stitches really tight and others really loose because then it will be difficult to make it look good afterwards. And when I am done with the first needle, I have 16 stitches here, I take my next knitting needle and I put it underneath the first and secure it with my 
left hand and I just keep going. I make sure the first stitch I put on this knitting needle that I get it as close as possible to the last one. And after I have, I have done that I just keep going. And I do the same operation with all four needles and I will be back with how to start knitting. I now have 16 stitches on each knitting needle and I'm ready to start knitting the ribbing on the ankle. So uh, I will do the ribbing uh, like this. I knit one and purl one. You can do several different vari vari variations of that. You can knit two, purl two or you can just be creative. You could knit three, purl one, or whatever you like really. So, but I will show you how I do this one. And just get my knitting needles organized again. <clears throat> When I knit, I stick my knitting needle through the first loop this way. I go to my index finger and I pick up the yarn and I pull it through the first stitch and I let it go off the needle. So that was the knit stitch and to purl I go the other way to my index finger underneath the yarn and I go from underneath and up through the stitch and I go underneath the yarn again pick it up and through the stitch and let it go so when I knit, I go from my side, underneath and up, through the stitch, to my index finger and under the yarn to pick it up and pull it through the stitch and pull it off the knitting needle. To purl, I go to my index finger first and underneath the yarn and I go on the side farthest away from me I stick my knitting needle through the stitch from the under side and up I go under the yarn again and back to my the tip of my index finger and I take the yarn through the stitch. So again this is demonstrated in the Selbu Mitten video if it is difficult to see all the details here because of the color of the yarn. I didn't really think about how it would look on video I just chose colors that traditionally have been used for socks like this. So, sorry about that. It will be easier when I add the white yarn for the pattern. So, when I am done knitting the first needle like this <clears throat> I will make sure when I knit the first stitch on the next needle that uh, 
as when I cast on, I wanted to get as close to as close to the last stitch here as possible. So when I knit it and I take it off, I just pull it a bit towards the last stitch. Then I will get this gap here, but on the next few stitches I make sure I don't tighten it as, uh, as much. I just knit them and let them stay a bit looser and then after a few stitches the gap is closed and after knitting the second row this will not be a problem anymore and you will have a good elastic um, ribbing and these gaps will not be visible at all I will continue to knit 10 rows of ribbing and then I will get back to you with the next step. Now I have 10 rows of ribbing and then I will go to the next step and that is to increase with four stitches on the next row and at the same time I will change to knitting needles size 3.5 millimeters. I will also stop to knit the ribbing so I will and to get the increases evenly distributed they will be placed between stitch 8 and 9 on each needle. So now I will just knit all the stitches. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And um, now to increase, I will pick up, I'll try if I stretch it a bit, you can see. This is the piece of yarn on top between the two needles. I will pick it up and I will place it like this on my left knitting needle and then I will stick my right knitting needle through like this so they, the needles go in opposite directions I will make them switch place like this and then I will knit and then as you can see uh, it will be even and there will be no holes you cannot see that I have increased if I did not do this operation I will show you if I just picked this piece of yarn up and knitted it like this, I would create a hole. And when I knitted the next stitch, you could still see the hole there. So that is the reason why I go like this and around and then pick up the yarn and pull through. What I do here is to twist the stitch one half round and that is why I don't get this hole. So this is how I increase. I will do the same on all four needles so that I increase four stitches in all and then I will get back on how to start knitting the pattern. I am now done increasing and I have also changed all my needles to size 3.5 millimeters. Uh, if you knit the women's size 
it is the same number of stitches you increase there. So now I will start to knit the pattern. Then I will need my white yarn. I take the yarn through here and I just fasten it around my thumb for a while just to prevent, prevent it from slipping when I start knitting with it. When I knit with two colors of yarn I always keep my bottom color closest to me over my index finger and then the pattern color over the middle finger as well and I secure them with these two fingers. So again if you have another way of doing this that you think is better for you then you just do it that way. This is just my preferred way of doing it. The only thing I recommend is to keep the same color at the same place all the time. So if you start with black closest to you and white on the other side you just keep it that way because if you start to change places you will get an uneven pattern that does not look too good. So now I will start knitting the side band. I can take the sock I have already knitted and I can lay it down here so you can see these three stitches here are the side band and there is another one on the other side and this is the main pattern. So I will start doing this three three stitches and then I will just pick up the color I want for my pattern. Now I can let this go because I have secured the yarn in my work here. So I will just keep knitting and make sure when I knit the pattern because you get the yarn that you don't use will look like this on the back side that this does not get too tight. It should not hang loose like this but if you pull it too tight it will make your work look tight and bulky I think is the word on the outside. So just make sure when you knit that you you check every once in a while that your work is elastic but not too loose. And uh, this will not happen here on this row but I will demonstrate. When you get to for example this part here or this part where you have a longer stretch with several stitches in the same color before you change then you will get a long piece of yarn on the back side I can demonstrate for you right now this is not the right pattern now for where I am but I do this now just to show you then I will knit several black stitches and then a white one in the end. Then you can see I have this long piece of loose yarn on the back and then it is easy if you can get a toe in there or <laughs> it is not really practical to have this piece of yarn there on the back side. So what I do is that when I have knitted four or five stitches I take the next one I'm just going to knit it as normal but I will go 
around instead of picking up my yarn like this I will go around the white one as well and then under the white yarn over the black there to get it out on this side and then I knit it but now my stitch is twisted the wrong way you can see that it has different angles on my knitting needle here so to fix that I will just take this knitting needle out and stick it in the other way and there you go and then when I knit the rest you can see I have made a point in the middle where I have secured the yarn so that is how I do that so now you can just keep on knitting your pattern all the way down to where you start the heel and I will get back to you with how to make the heel and the rest of the sock. I'm now finished knitting the ankle part of the sock and I will now um, pre prepare for the heel. And so I have two sides of the sock, this and this. I have to choose one to be the back side of the sock where I am going to knit the heel and I choose this one. First I make sure I have the side band on the front side so first I do that. Now I have only this pattern on these two needles I have the other sideband here and then I just put these two working yarns to the side for a bit and I find uh, another piece of yarn in a contrast color and I will just knit this yarn into my work only on those two needles on the back of the sock where I will make the heel. This yarn will just mark where the heel will be made later. And when I am finished knitting this red, I will just pick up my other two pieces of yarn. And I will knit over these again. So this red here will not count as a row. This is this will just mark the heel and is not a row. So now I go back to where I started with the red yarn and I start to knit the foot pattern of the sock. So 
you just continue to do so and let's just finish this needle first yeah like this and on this side that will be on top of your foot you will just continue to do this pattern and the side bands so you just keep going around and around as you did before on the ankle part and I will get back to you on how to decrease for the toe and how to make the heel I have now knitted most of the foot and here you can see the foot pattern and I'm ready to decrease for the toe and I will do that by I will decrease four stitches on each row and the toe on this sock will be slightly pointy. Here it will angle from right and towards left and here it will angle from left and towards the right. And I will use two different techniques depending on which side I do the decrease. So first of all I will knit the side band and then here where uh, the toe will angle from the right and towards the left I will take the first stitch after the side band loose off like this I will knit the next stitch and the first stitch I will just pull over like this and then I will just knit my pattern I will just do that until I get to the other side And here, when I have two stitches left before the next side band, here the toe will angle from the left and towards the right. Then I will knit the next to last stitch before the side band. I will put it back on the left knitting needle. I will take the last stitch and just pull it over and after I have done that I will just put it back onto the right knitting needle and then I will knit the side band and I will do exactly the same on this side here it will angle from the right and towards the left so I will take first stitch loose off knit the second and pull the first loose over and when I get to this end the toe will go this way I will knit the next to last stitch before the side band put it back on the left then I will pull the last stitch over and then 
the stitch back on the right needle. And this will keep going until I'm ready to finish the toe. And uh, I will do that and get back to how that is done. So now I am done decreasing for the toe and I will just show the finish here. I have already cut my yarn and I have I have uh, the stitches on the side bands left and three stitches on the front and three stitches on the back. And when I do these three remaining stitches I take the first one loose off I knit the middle one and then I take the first stitch over the one I knitted I put it onto the left needle and I take the last stitch over like this and then back on the right needle then I continue to knit the side band and I do the same thing on the other side. I take the first stitch loose off, I knit the middle one, the first stitch over, put the knitted stitch onto the left knitting needle and I pull the last stitch over like this. And now I have so few stitches remaining so I will just put it on here and then I will finish by knitting the remaining stitches but when I take the stitch off like this I will just pull my yarn through. So I will do that on all eight remaining stitches And by now, as you can see, the tip does not look very good, but you take your hand into the sock all the way to the tip of the toe, like this, and there you can see there's a little hole right there in the tip, and you take both yarn ends and I try to get them through the hole and I turn the sock inside out and I pull both yarn ends out here on the wrong side and then I gently pull the yarn ends and I make one single knot just to secure it a bit and I will go come back later to fasten these I will just turn it back onto the right side and there you can see you have a much better looking toe. So now we are left with the heel. So I have tightened here a bit 
too much. My red yarn has almost disappeared into the black. I will deal with that later. But I will now start to pick up all the stitches on each side of the red yarn. So I will start here and I will just pick them up like this. And there I am in the middle and I will do the same on the other side. there. And I will do the same here on this side. And then I will come back with the next step. So now I have done all four needles and I can start removing the red yarn. And I do that just by using my fifth knitting needle and I pick I just pick up the yarn and pull like this. So you just keep doing this until you have removed all the red yarn and then we are ready to knit the heel. I have removed all the red yarn and by doing that I have created this hole where I'm going to make the heel. I have also uh, used my bottom color yarn, the black one, and I have knitted these two needles just because before knitting the heel I would like to have one completely black row to divide the heel and foot pattern from the main pattern. This is just a matter of taste. I do it only because I think it looks better when the two patterns are somewhat divided. So these are the first two needles. If you don't do this then you just start to knit the heel pattern here instead. Okay I will now start to pick up the stitches for the sideband and for that I will also need my white yarn And I will try my best just to find some place good to pick up my stitches from. So I recommend that you take your time doing this and I will try this one. It doesn't look good in the beginning anyway.
just have to be creative and try to find secure places and here of course I have to tighten it afterwards but for now I will just start to knit and as you can see this doesn't look this doesn't look right when you first look at it but if you just twist your work a bit there you can see these are your stitches so on the in the first row you will have to just be a bit careful and you can see when I go along here that it straighten itself this for example just knit it and when you pull it over then the rest goes straight as well just have to make sure that it doesn't get too tight and this is the tricky part because it looks so I don't know what to say I think it's wrong to say that it looks downright ugly but <laughs> it certainly doesn't look very tidy and you may wonder what you have done wrong at this point but um, just hang in there and you will see in the end that your result will be better than it looks now but when you have you have so many needles and yarn ends and whatnot so There you go. And I have to pick up three stitches here as well. This one will be easier because now I have both my yarns tight. I have no loose ends. So just Try and see that it is not, that the way you pick them up does not create big holes. It will be some because you are pulling on the yarn all the time. But um, it will look better in the end when, when you have knitted a few rows so you don't work in this exact place and you can see already this doesn't look too bad just keep it tight and um, <clears throat> now you are at the beginning of the row again this is where I started by knitting this this side black and um, here I will start to decrease for the heel and this is done the exact same way as for the toe. So you just start first one loose off and this doesn't look good because here I have loose yarn. Here if I pull it it will be better but this I will do in the end anyway so I don't mind it too much now because it's too much to keep control to be in, be in control of 
So I will just do it in the exact same way as the, the toe. So you can just rewind and follow the instructions for the toe until you have done the heel. You do the uh, foot pattern on both sides and when you are done doing the heel your sock is ready. Thank you for watching. I hope you get the information you need.